Class is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we will be recapping day five of the NHL first round. And starting it off, it was the game between the Hurricanes and the Bruins. And obviously, the Bruins had some pretty interesting uh, news coming out of their camp prior to this game, which was that Tuka Rask was going to be opting out of the rest of these playoffs to return home to his family. And as such, Yaroslav Halak would take over as starting goaltender for the Bruins. And in this game, it worked out quite well. The the Bruins came out with the 1-0 lead with Charlie Coyle's goal, then Corrali would make a 2-0 before Nita Ryder would cut into it, bring it to within one, but in the end it would be Marshawn's empty netter to win it 3-1 for the Boston Bruins. Good news. Even though Rask is Don Halak had proven himself in these past couple of years to be an extremely capable backup goaltender, probably could be a starter on some of the teams in the NHL, and as such, he comes in here today and he does a fantastic job in relief of Tuka Rask, so the Bruins... It was a bit of a worry once Rask decided to leave, but Halak is doing a great job and will likely continue to do so in relief. The bad news for the Bruins is that still Pasternak did not play this game. They only scored two goals. It was enough to win this one, and there was some solid pressure, but in the end, two goals is not necessarily usually enough to win a lot of these games. And without Pasternak, they're really going to have to continue to try and adapt and get some of these depth players like Coyle, like Corrali, to step up more and try and get these games for the Bruins. On the Carolina Hurricanes side, the good news for them is that they decided to go back with Peter Mrazek, and he did a fantastic job, so it was kind of strange because after Game 1, Mrazek didn't look all that great, so Game 2, it was the uh, it was James Reimer who came into nets, but then Mrazek was given Game 3 here, which I thought was kind of surprising. It wasn't necessarily a back-to-back -back or anything like that, so I thought since Reimer was so good in Game 2 and the Hurricanes actually won that game, that Reimer would get Game 3, but in the end, Rod Brindamore decides to go back to Mrazek. It seemed like it was a perfectly fine choice, considering he he only led in two goals and was more, more or less quite solid, but I thought that was a pretty strange choice, even if that was the good news for the Hurricanes. The bad news for the Hurricanes, they only managed to score one goal here, and of course, the big thing is Andrei Svechnikov. He's been one of the best forwards for the Carolina Hurricanes thus far through these playoffs. He ends up going down very awkwardly, seems to be some sort of leg slash knee injury, and judging by the replay on this one, it doesn't look good. I'd be very surprised to see him again in this series, and potentially there might not be much else left for the Hurricanes after it, so hopefully it's not super serious, but the Hurricanes are looking like they're going to have to adapt to a life without Svechnikov, at least for the foreseeable future, sort of like what the Bruins are going to have to do with Pasternak. Next series was Coyotes Avalanche. The Avalanche came in with a 2-0 lead, and the Coyotes cut into that with this 4-2 victory, an impressive win by the Coyotes. They end up coming up with a 1-0 lead with Derek Stepan's goal before it's tied up by Burakovsky. Then Brad Richardson makes a 2-1, and that one would hold until Taylor Hall would get an empty netter. Then Rantanen would actually cut into the lead, put it back to one goal with the net pulled. However, another empty netter from Lawson Krause would end up finishing it off for the Coyotes for two. Good news for the Coyotes. You know, when I made my prediction in this series, I had said that the Avalanche would win in five games, and the reason I had given the Coyotes one game was because I felt like Darcy Kemper was good enough so far in these playoffs to potentially steal a game in this series, and that is what game three exactly was. The Avalanche were pouring shot after shot, over 50 shots in this game, and Kemper was just too good in this situation. You see on this Ranton and goal what it took to actually beat Kemper late in this game. It was crazy how solid he was. He's been one of the best goaltenders thus far, you know, up there with the likes of, you know, Carey Price and Jonas Corposalo thus far. He's been basically fantastic in every game, barring game two against the National Predators, and he really steals this game for the Coyotes. Bad news, the Coyotes were pretty heavily outplayed for most of this game besides Darcy Kemper, so I don't think that this win is necessarily going to mean so much for them moving forward, but it is a nice little confidence booster certainly good news for the avalanche they poured on the shots they were better than even though they lost this game compared to winning game two you could make the argument that they were better this game than they had been in game two so it was nice to see that improvement it's just couldn't really find a, a way to beat Darcy Kemper. And into the bad news here, that has actually been a bit of an issue thus far in this series for the Avalanche, if we're being honest. In that first game, it took about 
55 minutes of a 0-0 game before finally the Avalanche were able to score a goal, and they did pour it on and score three rather quickly, but the fact that it took that long to get pucks past Darcy Kemper was a bit of an issue, and here tonight, only another two goals. This is usually an Avalanche team that is quite strong offensively. I don't think this is going to be a major issue for them, but they will need to find a way to beat Darcy Kemper uh, consistently anyhow. On to the next series, that was Blue Jackets versus Tampa Bay. This series came in tied at 1, and it would be the Lightning who would get Game 3 and take the 2-1 series lead, and it was a solid game for the Lightning at that. They had the 1-0 lead with Alex Kalorn before it was tied up by Riley Nash, then Point and Hedman would score to make it 3-1, and the Blue Jackets in the third period would get a goal from Robinson, but it would not be enough, and the Lightning would take the one-goal victory. Good news for the Lightning, they looked very strong in this game. They were getting some decent chances, and one thing there is the fact that, interestingly enough, this could be maybe a slight fault of Corpus Allo, but on this point, on this Hedman goal, these were not necessarily the gritty goals that I was expecting they would need to get. These were a couple of uh, decent shots, Hedman's one especially, and as such, maybe that could be an avenue still that the Lightning could use to score in this series, which is a good thing because that's, of course, what they are normally used to. The bad news for the Lightning, I wouldn't say that there's too much bad news from this game. The only thing I can think of is that they really outplayed the Columbus Blue Jackets in this one, and yet it was still a one-goal game. I'd like to see them really dominate a game thus far on the scoreboard as well in this series because their two victories have been this one and then a quintuple overtime game back in game one and so not the most convincing victories still but it's a 2-1 series lead hard to complain too much about that good news for the blue jackets is probably that they kept this game close but honestly that's really the only thing i can come up with even corpusalo who has been really a consistent good news for the blue jackets i thought was good in this game honestly he was probably better than average for most goaltenders but from corpusalo's expected level through the first couple of games of this series i felt like it was slightly below just because i feel like a couple of these lightning goals he may have wanted to have back in terms of bad news for the Blue Jackets they just looked really bad this game honestly in the words of their own coach John Tortorella the Lightning were good and the Blue Jackets sucked that was basically what you could leave it at they looked tired they looked maybe maybe the game five series or the five game series against the Maple Leafs and then that quintuple overtime and everything has really caught up to them and they're maybe getting a bit tired like players like Seth Jones and such I don't know if that's going to be the case, or maybe they'll show up to play in Game 4, but this Game 3 definitely was not it. And then the final series of the day, it was Blackhawks versus Golden Knights. The Blackhawks were looking to cut into this 2-0 series lead like the Coyotes had done earlier in the day, but they would be unable to do it. The Golden Knights now leading the series 3-0 and putting it on the brink of match point to try and be the first team to advance to the second round. This one starts off with a Carlson shorthanded goal, William Carlson I should specify, and then Patrick Brown scoring here, centering that fourth line for the Golden Knights before in the third period Ali Mato would tie into or cut into this lead, but no other action there for the Blackhawks and they'd lose 2-1. to one. Good news for the Golden Knights, they come out here with Marc-Andre Fleury, as I had somewhat expected would happen, but it's apparently seemingly that Laner would get the following game the next day uh, because it is a back-to-back, so I don't know how much of an issue it was with Laner playing poorly in Game 2 or just the fact that they wanted to get Fleury a game here, but he does quite well. I wasn't a fan of the goal he actually let in to Olimata, but otherwise he was quite solid, so... Vegas clearly having two very capable goaltenders on their side. In terms of bad news for the Golden Knights, you know, these past couple of games, they've probably been giving just a bit too much leeway to the Chicago Blackhawks. You know, that game one was just so in control by the Golden Knights that I was expecting the entire or most of the series to be like that. But this game two and game three were a lot closer than I would like to see for the Golden Knights, or at least what the Golden Knights would like to see for themselves. So, It'll be interesting to see whether or not they can really close out this series in four games or if maybe the Blackhawks will make a series of it. 
In terms of good news for the Blackhawks, you know, the fact that they've taken who, in my opinion, is the best Western Conference team and they've played them pretty evenly in these past couple of games, I'd say is a pretty decent accomplishment for themselves. You know, even if they're almost certainly going to lose this series at this point, I feel like they can be proud with the effort that they have put up in these past couple of games. The only bad news is once again the fact that they aren't picking later in the draft than they could have if they had lost the play-in rounds, but I'm sure the Chicago players are proud with themselves anyhow and just it's been a decent past couple of games especially after what happened in game one so I'm sure they're keeping their heads up rather high even if they do lose in four games fine that will do it for this recap on to my predictions how those are faring I had said the Hurricanes would win in seven games having seen this one and now the Bruins being up 2-1. I'm beginning to think this could still go 7, but I just don't know if the Hurricanes will have it in them to actually finish this off. It might be leaning more towards the Bruins. In the next one, I had the Avalanche in 5 games. Now it is 2-1. The Coyotes have gotten the one game that I gave them. I actually have pretty solid confidence that this one could very well end in 5 games. I then said the Lightning would take it in 6. They're up 2-1. Judging by how the Blue Jackets looked in this one, I have some confidence that this one could go six games as well so that's another prediction looking solid and then finally I had the Golden Knights in four games right now they're leading 3-0 I see no reason why they can't just take it in four so that might be my first correct prediction of these playoffs thus far class dismissed